so I ended up getting in good with him. And uh, so then they cast me in Friday the 13th and I did a couple commercials with Michael. But then uh, I'll tell a real quick story because I kind of like burn, burn some bridges, which is why I've never, never done this before. <laughs> Welcome to one and only Kyle Davis. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Kyle? How's it and going? You know what's even crazier about this whole two, two, two thing, and we literally didn't even plan this, but I don't know if you guys know this. Look on my wrist. 11, 11 is my lucky number. 11 plus 11 is 22. And so I like 11, 11 has been a big thing in my life forever. Oh my God. Crazy. Gosh. So it, it's your, uh, is it, what is it called? Like an angel number, I think? You know, I don't know. I when I was like a little kid, I used to see it on my VCR, and I'd always make a wish before I'd go to sleep. And then, like, gosh, twenty something years ago, I had a knee surgery, and I got it for good luck. And then I actually got married on eleven, eleven, eleven. Oh my gosh, I, that's, <laughs> that's awesome! And we had no idea, and now we all know. So, yay! This is awesome, Kyle. It was meant to be. <laughs> that is, is so strange. I, I've heard you're not the first person, and. The, the, to I I'm very familiar with the 1111 theory and it's one of those numbers they say that you always catch on the clock for whatever reason you always yeah. see it like you said on the VCR I always catch it on the clock always and it's, I have a uh, question though what's a VCR <laughs> yeah I, see that's, <laughs> a lot, that's what a lot of people say actually back in the day they're like what a VCR and I'm like oh how old are you like I'm 20 oh I was like oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. Well. that was a thing where they put this shit in there and then magic happened but yeah, but uh, yeah. about right. a lot of, I guess it's like kind of like a religious type of thing too. A lot of people at grocery stores or whatever come up and be like, "Oh, did you uh, something about God?" And I'm like, "No, I just saw it on a VCR, bro. I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. They're like, huh, "Austin three sixteen. No, yeah, yeah. No. It's like, yes. it's not uh, a Bible verse. They usually but, uh, get offended and they're like, "Oh, okay." I'm like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> Offended in a grocery store while <laughs> checking out avocados, you know. Exactly. exactly. Well, Kyle, I guess uh, our first official question for you um, is what cereal best describes you and why? Hmm. No, I'm oh, <laughs> Lord. You know, it's <laughs> another crazy thing. I just joined TikTok like three weeks ago. Uh-huh. And so I've been like uploading like a bunch of like old acting things I've done. And the very first thing I ever did out here in 1998, I was on that show, The Dating Game with Chuck Woolery. You were great. And, <laughs> yes, see, you, know, you must have watched it. And that's literally what I did on there. And it was so embarrassing. And already, since I put it up, a bunch of my fans have already been making memes of me doing that on Tony the Tiger's body. And it was so embarrassing, like so embarrassing. But uh, sometimes you just gotta put it out there. So yeah, I guess that would be it, unfortunately. The Although kind, I do, I do love uh, I love cinnamon toast crunch. So, so I wonder how that would be. see. The problem is, is they're great. Is like perfect. Like that's literally the perfect answer. <laughs> how do you answer for cinnamon toast crunch? Like what? What's the what's the punchline there? Yeah, they're just fucking delicious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I did. Because I'm crunchy. I don't know. Is that a thing? Like, is that I'm crunchy? Because I'm sugary sweet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> crunchy divine. And I taste good in your mouth. It's like that's like a dead giveaway though for cereal. Like it is. Sweet erotica. What, what's your guys' favorite cereals? Uh do I have I don't have like a clever answer, but it has to be Lucky Charms. Mm. Lucky Charms? Okay. Yeah. I used to love it. I think I've spoken about this before about my cereals. Like I'm boring. I like like corn checks. Like uh, I'm like a plant. Dude, I, those, I actually I love Honey Nut Cheerios, and I love like uh, I used to love Wheaties with a little bit of honey on them. I got a box of Wheaties in in there right now too, bro. Yeah, I got see, a box. Like, yes. the, old, the older I get, the the more boring I get. But I used to the eat more brand. Back when I was like in high school and shit, so I don't know. Wheaties is yeah. that the one that they like? If you eat your Wheaties, you're gonna be a NASCAR athlete. Is that what they say? That, yeah. you used to always have like Michael Jordan on the front cover or Tiger Woods and shit like that. But now I have a kid. I have a kid now, and she loves like Cinnamon Toast Crunch and and Fruity Pebbles and Lucky Charms and all those things. So, yeah, I don't think I've ever had Fruity Pebbles. That I'll put that on my list of things that I have yet to try. You gotta try them. They're like Rice Krispies. They literally go soggy in thirty seconds. So you gotta eat them real fast. <laughs> done yeah i but before doing this stream i'd never had a pop tart before or a hot pocket so now when <laughs> next time we have you on i will try uh what is it fruity pebbles 
honorable pe- mention for fruity pebbles too you can use them as like rice crispy treats similarly you can oh. make a killer killer one uh and you can go see a doctor who'll make medicated ones for you i believe too and <laughs> wow. those are even better you, you yeah they're, so. they're like wheat shops literally right down the street from me and uh i don't know if they have those but i know they have the rice crispy treats i've seen those can't go wrong the edibles though wrong. they those things they fucking <laughs> i can't even do them because i've had so many experiences where I've done them and I was like almost like one of those videos where I was like calling the police saying I think I'm about to die right now I can't breathe and shit like that so yeah edibles are no joke mm-mm. yeah not no I'm just anyway. back back in the day I, I lived in Arizona in this little town called Sedona and uh I was like one of those bad kids and I used to sell weed and acid and stuff like that and so I'm used to like back in the day weed we just called it like uh dirt weed and we'd sell like twenty dollar sacks And I love that shit because you could just smoke a joint and just laugh and be hungry. Now I take one hit and I'm paranoid and stoned for 30 minutes. Oh my God. Going on here. This is lit for half the day and I'm tired immediately. And my eyes is crooked and eyelids hanging down over my face. And for me, it really is because I'm blind in my left eye. So the the more I don't sleep or drunk, I get it just wanders way off. And then I'm like, oh, great. (laughs) That's why I used to usually wear sunglasses all the time. But yeah. I love it. Yeah. Like it's a meter. It's a meter. You know what I mean? My, how fucked up I am. This is good. We're fine. And then here, call the ambulance. I'm it really sure. is. The further I get off, people are like, "Wait, were you talking to me though?" I'm like, "No, no, I'm talking." Talk so, good time. I love it. I love it. Kyle, like, so you just started TikTok, and are you? You're also on Cameo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have you gotten anything crazy on cameo or has it all been pretty gentle <laughs> uh, i mean like i've got I've, nothing really crazy honestly i've like broken up with some people really and, that's oh. crazy well that's not <laughs> yeah but it's not like, it's not like mean stuff because I, I don't okay, really okay. want to be I, i'm not like a mean-spirited person so <laughs> i tell the people i'm like hey I'll, I'll like gently and funny break up with the person but i'm not going to be like you fucking piece of shit like i'm not <laughs> um unless they really want it and they want it like private and then i can do it for them but uh but uh no the cameo thing i just go gentle only a few of those mainly it's just all the the regular just happy birthday shit happy valentine's day which is so funny because like i started this page a while ago on facebook called little kevin friends and uh, i was doing videos for free all the time for fans and i was like man i wish there was a service where i could do this and like make money off of it (laughs) Because I was like, I'm spending so much time doing this. And then all of a sudden, Cameo came out, and I was like, oh, shit. And I was like <laughs> one of the first people who signed up for it. And uh, so that was a, a cool thing to start off doing that. But, uh, yeah. yeah. There, there are some really awesome people on Cameo, too. Like, Cameo has so many incredible people. Like, uh, I think the, the top seller last year, or the top two, Mick Foley. I don't know if you're a wrestling fan. Oh, I love Mick Foley. So do we. We're big Mick Foley fans. And also Kevin from The Office. I know that they've been doing really well on Cameo. Yeah, but, Kev, uh, he, he's made like, I think he's made a couple million dollars doing that. Yeah, Big that, Kev. Dog. That, that is seriously nuts. And Snoop Dogg is a big, he was a big seller, but he's also part owner of the company. Oh, interesting. Snoop's smart. He's got his fingers in a lot of stuff these days. The businessman, Snoop Dogg, the business yeah, he, is rolling he big. He just bought Death Row Records. Just bought too. Death Row, got that new album, B O D R, back on Death Row. Shout Dude, out Snoop Dogg he's for sure. Killing it, man. He's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love Cameo. It's actually a cool way to to like give back to the fans and still make a little bit of money. But people don't realize like Cameo takes twenty five percent. Then if you if you book it from the app and not from the website, Apple takes thirty five percent. So then you're literally getting like no money from it. Six dollars, yeah. So it's that's wild. Yeah. So some of my fans, because I started raising the price higher and higher, they're like, oh, I can't believe you're charging that much. I'm like, sorry, dude, if I don't, I literally make nothing. Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 pretty wild, but it's and so great that old, you're Old school Cameo Gs, remember, that in the beginning of Cameo, you couldn't tell if it was from your phone or from the web. Because if it's from the web, it's a different percentage. Like you just said, Apple Apple's brutal. They take their cut no matter what. That's yeah. why they got in a lawsuit with Fortnite was over this whole thing. It was everything you just said about Cameo and Apple is why Fortnite su- let, is off the Apple store and sued them. And, oh, wow. And won, like, a small victory, but for the amount of money that they paid, it wasn't really a victory <laughs> right. in comparison, I, I you know. I don't know. How how does uh, 
how does Cameo get off that then? I don't understand. So how Cameo, if you book it, if you book it through the web, which is like you're on your computer, you don't have to pay the thirty percent. Right. So yeah. you get more of your Cameo still that, takes that, their that's cut. That's what I started right. I wrote so right on my thing right before you booked me. I put only book me on the web, otherwise I can't do it. And then you still people they don't read it, and then you're like. And at first, like, I would get a whole bunch of these, like, web things. And I was like, man, I really don't want to do these because I'm making no money. And at first, I would write people. But then I was just like, oh, fuck it. I'll just fucking do it. <laughs> they come around. The big, the fruit gets its money, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for, for, because I only do cameos as a little Kev character. I don't do it okay. as my regular self, which I kind of like because I, I only do it for that character and only that. And uh makes it easier that way. So if you're breaking up with someone, it's really little Kev doing it. So Look, it's not you. Every it's time. Kev. All the little Kev's on Cameo. Kyle's not on Cameo. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, somebody is mentioning the halftime show since we were talking about Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Amazing. W what are your thoughts? Uh, me and my wife, it was, uh, honestly, it was so fucking awesome because that's the era that we come from. So that was just like so much nostalgia going on. And uh, I, I, just, I wish it could have gone on longer. It was so short. And I knew it, it was, was. I just, I could have just watched the whole, like another like 30 minutes of them doing those cool songs and other shit like that. But uh, I, I really dug it. What'd you guys think? Obsessed. I, I agree though. Too short. I think it was like 13 minutes long. Where yeah. like, who was the year before? Was the year before JLo Shakira? It was, I'm trying to remember who was the year before, but it was like double the time. Was it? I, I generally don't even watch the halftime shows because they're just not my thing. But that this one I had to watch. So yeah, I have two main takeaways it. from it. The first was that the performances I thought were incredible. All, all everyone performed really well. They all sounded great, every one of them, from Kendrick to Mary J. Blige to Eminem. Right. Uh, but second, I felt like the way it looked on TV, it was so produced that they were able to make it work. But I felt like it was one of those things where I was like, on paper, this probably looked really good. And in planning, it looked good. But when you applied it, it was like, oh, shit, this place is way too big. You need something. I wanted more grandiose shit. I wanted people flying in on rockets on zip lines. Or more something. people you know upside down. Mean? And explosions in the yeah, background. I, I thought the, the, set was kind of, the set was kind of boring. It was. It was because they literally just like wheeled that little truck out, and you're like, "Oh, this is it, huh? Huh? Okay." Yeah. And it was I, great. Like I liked the city of LA. They had that on the ground, and it was like it felt like it was taking place from house party to house party. And I got that. I understood the element. And then we were in the right. 50 Cent video, and it was cool. I thought my favorite part was Kendrick's because his was the weirdest. You had the people in the in the bags like dancing around. And I was like, "This is weird." Like I like this. Like you know what's <laughs> weird for me? I I had honest. I had heard of Kendrick Lamar. I've never heard of his music before. So he was the only person I've never even heard of before. Huh. Yeah, no, I thought, he, he did great, I thought yeah. they could have brought like Jay Z on there and like some other people that were from But the, that's like, East Coast. That's another West show. Coast. And that's another show, right? They're, next yeah. year, don't be surprised if it's Jay Z on yeah. stage with Beyonce. That would be awesome. And, and you know, you know what I heard though, too, and, is I heard you know. because of the stage the way it was, it, the people from the other side couldn't even see it because they weren't like turning yep. around, like singing. Yeah, because it was all for the camera. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so Still, Kyle, who, who would you like to see do the halftime show next year? Definitely more rap because, uh, I mean, I love all types of music, but uh, I definitely love a lot of hip hop and a lot of like old school hip hop. So I, I would love to see even like some 80s stuff, maybe uh, some, uh, well, I know Run DMC is not all the way there, but they could do that. Or let's uh, turn it all the way. Let's bring in like some Journey and some Steve Miller band. That's there. Yeah, that would be cool. I love yeah. that type of stuff. I just don't know if uh, halftime fans who are tuning in would really be like, who the fuck is Journey and Steve Miller band, though? I don't I, know. Get it. I don't know. I'm, I'm down for Journey and Steve Miller band. Kiss. I'm bring kiss. Bring kiss. Kiss, kiss would be great. Be down, has Metallica done it? They have. Oh, uh, okay. I think they have uh, years ago, but it was during the lackluster year. Like I posted something about when Cre fucking Creed did it. <laughs> like if Creed, Creed, did it? Creed played the halftime show, and <laughs> I posted it was the year they had the aerial male dancers flying down on these like curtains, and they were like, "Can you take me higher?" <laughs> I don't even remember that. I got to go look it up on YouTube. <laughs> That's yeah, Creed. Hey, wow, that's maybe, unique. maybe it was awesome. 
I love yeah. Creed. You know, people hate on Creed. I love the music. F what you heard. Right? Listen, there were so many. I mean, I'm, Creed had uh, quite a few hit songs, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm one of those. I, I don't know the names of too many bands, but like the songs come on. I'm like, oh, I fucking love that. I was one of those people who bought like uh, off the TV late at night where they had those CDs of the, all the one hit wonders <laughs> on the 80s. I fucking bought those CDs. And then all my friends were like, hey, can I borrow those so I can like download them to my MP3? And I was like, okay, cool. I love 80s music and like rap music. That's kind of my jam. So the, yeah. the demo. See, I like like for me, I would love to see like Alice Cooper and Slipknot playing, but in, <sighs> in what reality does that happen ever? That's probably never gonna happen, only because I have no idea who Slipknot is. Right. But it's a little too Alice scary for the children. Be, <laughs> it would be great though. Like that we need a Halloween Super Bowl. Like you know what I mean? Let's let not play the Halloween Super Bowl. Like yeah, it was a, like just, we're just uh, a hard metal band in general. America, would, like, what is that? The one who was like like throwing urine on everybody and doing stuff like that, or is that somebody else? Marilyn Manson. Oh what? Well, yeah, he probably did that too. What was the? Or or am I thinking of like in, insane clown posse? I don't really. Know. ICP sprays oh, Fago. It's not urine. It's just it soda tastes pops. like urine. Let's not get it wrong, Josh. <laughs> Fago is like one degree. Warm Fago is pretty pretty foul. I will say. Gotcha, but, gotcha. Well, they use the non-sticky stuff and like the they use like sugar-free or something so that it doesn't stick to the. Va- <laughs> How kind of them! Sugar-free hey, Fago. That's, that's right. so kind of them. That's awesome. You know. And- <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, so, uh, are you guys both yeah. local? Do you live in LA? I'm in LA right now. Oh. Uh, I've been in LA the past ten years. Uh, and other than that, before that, I was from the I was from NorCal, so I'm from the Bay Area. So I know all about rap music, nice. gangster it, rap music. We yeah. grew up on all the good stuff out there: the E40s, the Brother Lynch oh, Hungs, the Two Shorts, the love for, uh, love, Yuck all Mouse, those, all the you know all that stuff. So. And I'm from Miami, so we have Pitbull. <laughs> yeah. and then we you have that what? one band shake that ass bitch and let me i don't know what band that two, two live crew is that two live crew oh fuck two live crew two live crew was so ahead of their time honestly i wanted to play uh welcome to the fuck shop at my wedding but my wife said because <laughs> no. uh, I, I honestly think i can sing almost word for word every two live crew song i love them i mean who says should, it would have been? Dad. You're like, this is a dedication of love, and they're like, yeah. no. It, it was like, there's kids there and people. I was like, who gives a shit, man? It's gonna be funny. But, yeah, I uh, I walked down the aisle. Well, after my husband and I got married, we walked down to Love Gun from Kiss. So I mean, if people are listening to the lyrics. Nice. You're welcome. You're welcome. Right. Hey, if you're only gonna get married one time. Might as well make it memorable. So. Yeah, and we also did get married by Mick Foley, which I should. Yeah, uh, they had like one of the mention. most memorable <laughs> weddings like ever in like the Dude. history of time. Yes, yeah. they were married on TLC show, and they had uh, uh, Heather's friend Mick uh, officiate and officially, you know, be the official for the wedding. So it was incredible. So it was, was like one of those TLC shows, like watch me get married or something like that or say yes to the dress which i'm sure is just like watch me get married i have <laughs> no i don't even know if that's what it, what it's called i have no idea I, watch I, me get I, married i love it I, one of my friends did that and then uh he didn't even he ended up getting like divorced like a month later oh, oh. shit <laughs> watch me get divorced that's the uh the follow-up episode yeah <laughs> yeah so you so you uh, you're living in miami right now then Yes, that I am. The 305. Gotcha. Ooh, I think. How's the weather out there? Gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been really nice, thankfully. So Very nice. It's fucking it's a, windy and cold here today in L.A. That seems It was surprising. extremely windy and brisk and brisk. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, I love it out here in L.A., though. Never been to my one of these days, though, maybe. We welcome speaking you with so open arms. fast times in Los Angeles. And so let's speak in the fast times, okay? Uh, in one of your recent posts, okay, we've been digging your social. You mentioned that your kiddo <laughs> reminds you of Spicoli <laughs> from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Uh, one of your favorite films or what? Great film? Honestly, it really is one of my favorite movies. I fucking have seen that movie so many times. It's just a classic, and it's a classic for a reason because everything in it is so, it's fantastical. It's amazing writing. It's just amazing director, amazing cast. It's it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I really do. That and also yeah. my other favorite uh, comedy is uh, Dumb and Dumber. 
Okay, perfect transition. Thank you, Kyle, for doing this for us. We have a picture we're going to pull up because when we were Google searching your name, we found this glorious image of, I believe, you and and one of your buddies. Uh, that, that, that's a, he's that's he's one of my best friends. That's John Reap. He's actually a very famous comedian. So you and John, you put this together. I would say if Dumb and Dumber met Duck Dynasty, t tell me about this look and how it came to be. <clears throat> I will. So uh, we did this movie back in uh, 2012 or 14. I don't remember when it was, but uh, it was called Into the Storm. And it was like a kind of like shot, like documentary style. And me and uh, John in the movie, we were named, uh, uh, what was it? Donk and what? The, I don't even know. <laughs> Donk and Revis. And uh, we played the, the two dumb rednecks in the thing who drive around like a shitty pickup truck and stuff like that. So John actually had the good idea because uh, his his comedy is all based around being a redneck, but he calls himself a Metro Jethro because he's half redneck, half redneck, half like L.A. Metro type person. So he was like, dude, wouldn't it be fucking funny? He's like, you love Dumb and Dumber. We're like these dumb like rednecks. He's like, we should do this at the premiere. I was like, dude, let's set it up. And he like sent the producer an email and he was like, yes, he's like, I'll pay for it. Just do that. It'll be funny. And uh we ended up doing it and it became like huge at this premiere. The premiere was in New York. And then the whole night we had like paparazzi following us around. People were like <laughs> asking for autographs. They had no idea who we were. They were just like, they, they thought the movie they, they had saw on like the, the, uh, the screen was funny and we were signing autographs and it was, it was good times. I, I really do enjoy this outfit though. Like it makes me smile. And I think that's what's most important, right? It, was, it, it is. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for like, do you guys have like a ghillie suit, like jacket too? You just kind of like throw on some leaves and like a cloak with that. It would be amazing. You know? I, I, I don't have any of that stuff. That was all just rented stuff, but yeah, that would be sweet. And I'm trying to think of what that dumb and dumber was at the, uh, I don't even know who I would play. Was that Jim Carrey's part? Uh, no. Was Jim in the orange or was it okay? So, who, I think who, Jim who, was in the Lloyd blue Christmas, and no, I'm not remembering the other. I have to name. see. I don't, I think Jim was in the was in the yeah, or in the orange. I think I may be wrong. 50, you know, it's 50 funny? chance. I actually, auditioned, <laughs> I actually auditioned for Dumb and Dumber 2 back when that first came out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't make it to the that's the right. Part. There was one in between Dumb and Dumber -er that was. Or was Dumb and Dumber? No, the there's only one that... there's only been the one after it's. Or yeah, no, it was the. Uh, it wasn't the uh, remake. But it wasn't Jim and them. It wasn't. No, it was uh, the actors who got the part were Eric Christian Olsen, and he's he's one of the main stars in that show, uh, NCIS LA. Yeah, okay. he played the Jim show Perry like part. NCIS, like <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, so he got that part, and it's crazy that the director of that literally his office is. 300 feet down the street from my from where i live okay. so convenient yeah i walk by his office all the time and i'm like fuck you <laughs> <laughs> well i mean look parts that you have landed have been so incredibly iconic and we would be remiss if we didn't talk about little kev who we have to i mean this is not a lie, but that is my favorite episode of all time. And I've seen every single one of them. So what do you think it is about Lil Kev that makes him so iconic and makes him kind of stand out from other roles on the show? <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, he's just uh, he's just silly and crazy. And, uh, you know, and now now it's obviously not PC. So I, I can't can't even say, you know, the R word anymore. Right. Which I, I can understand. But, uh, I, you know, I was never making fun of, uh, of people who have uh, disabilities in the first place. But uh, I, just have, I have to answer that a lot because a lot of people still, when I do live streams, call me out. And they're like, I can't believe you're making fun of them. I'm like, dude, I'm playing a character. I'm in no way. I'm like, he, I, I call Lil Kev like a 50-50 bar because when he raps, he's normal. And when he's not, he's just like acting silly and, and crazy. And uh, he fucking still lives with his mom for crying out loud. But yeah, it was it became an iconic character just because I think it was like that. It was just silly, and they're like, "Oh shit, this guy can rap too," and he's fucking dissing D. And uh, it's also it was one of the it's one of the most well known episodes because of Little Kev, but also because that's when uh, Dayman and Nightman came out. You know, Dayman. Oh. oh. 
the fight to the nightmare. Oh, oh. So, you got to do the clap, that was, right? Yeah. And that was just a, a, such, a fa- such a fantastic song, too. So that, that episode is only 22 minutes long, and it's jam-packed with so much funny shit. So that's why I think that character became so popular. Because it was one of the most well-known and well-liked episodes out of all like hundreds of episodes I've done. So, yeah, and and it's, it's listen. I never thought seventeen years later I would be uh, still portraying this character. Because I, I mean, I've done like hundreds of different shows and commercials and movies, and that's the only thing I ever get recognized <laughs> from. The only thing. So that's yeah. why that's why I started this TikTok because a lot of my fans from the Always Sunny like. Dude, you should like start a TikTok. People have no idea who you are and what you've been in. And I was like, uh, all right, fuck it, I'll do it. And then I started it, and people were like, oh, that was you, that was you, that was you. And I was like, yeah, dude, I don't just play a, a you know a, a person of a, a, like this on, on TV all the time. I I actually play like other roles. <laughs> I, like like to me, little Kev. Like and uh, obviously um, being being PC because I agree that word is not appropriate. I just think he has this really fun childlike mentality that to me like i'd want to hang out with, with little kev and bring my crew you know what i mean like i just feel like he's so fun plus super talented you know yeah. he can fucking so. bust, out, bust out some sweet uh freestyles <clears throat> i'll tell you a little story because charlie of uh, always sunny he actually told me how how i got the audition so uh wendy o'brien who's you know famous casting director she casts literally everything sons of anarchy all these mm. she's actually a good friend of mine now but so originally when i auditioned for that i was standing like 10 feet away from her because she was you know behind the camera reading the lines and i'm you know against the wall and so i'm like reading the lines and at one point i think it might have even been when uh when he comes up and and is saying like uh, our person one or our person three normal zero or whatever and i'm like standing in in the in the bedroom door like going yo what's cracking dog and he's like oh (laughs) and i go and like give him like a high five and like stuff like that so i was standing really far away and i was going like this like doing like a i try to do a high five but she was far away and i'm doing like a claw hand and charlie was like he's like we literally were dying laughing so hard because we had no idea what the fuck you were doing it literally looked like you were throwing up like a gang sign claw hand and uh he was like he's like you were really funny but he's like because of that too you got the job i was like oh well sweet thanks man i appreciate it it's well deserved I, I well mean, deserved and well history deserved. was 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 written that is <laughs> by far the, one of the most iconic episodes it's up there with it's like the same with like south park's world of warcraft episode it's a similar like it's a legendary and there's so many like if you if you only watch most people who've only watched like one episode of sunny that's probably the one they've watched like you it's saying. that's that's what i've heard from a lot of fans mm-hmm. actually uh, it's like a lot of like people's intro episodes. Who- it's, a, it's a brutal <laughs> intro to that show. <laughs> yeah, I guess, it's a, but I guess yeah, it's a it's a good. You could start with watch. rum ham. I'm like something sweet and something. No, like, no, no. You got- <laughs> I'm trying, I mean, everybody has their own like gateway into it. But I heard that's that's like a popular one. I'm trying to think of another one. You know, I don't even know the name. One of my favorite ones is uh, the one with the junkyard cat, where Agent Jack Bauer. Where okay. he sleeps in gasoline and stuff like that, and he fucking like gets blown up and shit. Yeah. And, and right. then there's another one where the gang buys a boat and like Charlie's like he's eating bar- barnacles. Barnacles. Yeah. And they're like they're like Charlie, do not eat those. He's like I'm gonna eat them. Like do not fucking eat them. He's like yeah 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 I'm not gonna eat them. And then he's like slowly going to eat them. It's it's it's. Oh, Here they're delicious. Oh. Now, do do you see? Obviously, like you did make another appearance. Uh, I was it the D's baby episode. Yeah, it was when uh, they they basically brought back all of uh, Sweet D's baby daddies who they thought could have been because you know she's fucking banged the uh, <laughs> the most gruesome. Awful she's popular. On yeah. the planet. I mean the the China man from the the uh, the, the Chinese shop. Uh, I mean all kinds of things. <laughs> so yeah, they brought me back for that, and they were actually going to bring me back for uh, two years ago for the the Super Bowl when the Eagles had just won the Super Bowl. They they like did a two parter of that, but uh, ultimately I, they didn't do it. I think it happens to be because Glenn actually did a a, a GQ article, which kind of sucks for me because uh, he they asked him a question. They said, out of all the episodes you've done, 
have you ever regretted one episode? And he was like, he's like, actually, yeah. And of course, out of all the episodes, he fucking named me. (laughs) And I was like, oh my God. And no joke, when he did that, they literally dropped the show. So it's not on FX anymore. It's not on FFX. It's not on Comedy Central. It's not on any. So my residuals went just done. But I think it was because, you know, the they said the R word in it so many times. Yeah. And I don't know if he, if his wife or, or if somebody in his family, something, I, I don't know about anything like that. I think mm-hmm. he just genuinely felt like awful about saying it. Like but, they haven't done worse things on that no, show. That's, like, that's what I'm saying. On. But I think maybe that's why the first decided, show is like. I trust me. I, it kind of like sets the tone though for what the <laughs> show is. It's like, look, this is the first show deals with it. Just throws, you know what I mean? Dude, and I, the show, trust me. And, yeah. and that was my Pretty thing. Cheap. So I talked to my fans about it because my fans were the one who told me about it because I'm not like reading GQ articles, and they're like, "Did you hear about this?" And I was like, "No." And I went and read it and I was like, what the fuck, dude? And then I was like, man, I was like, if you do a show like Always Sunny, I, you shouldn't have any regrets. Like you, if you can't just single out one or two episodes, I understand, you know, you you probably regret it. Like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that because the older you get, you're like, I would never do that now. And they they talk about stuff like that on their, their new podcast. Podcast, yeah. But uh I was just kind of like devastated by that. I was like, damn. I was like, that's why I didn't get cast in, in the in the thing. Because like I said, I'm friends with the casting director. And she was like, hey, Kyle, I'll keep your availability for this. Because I'm pretty sure they're going to cast you. And I was like, oh, sweet. And then it didn't happen. And I think if the episode might have been called something else. Because I know he loved the episode because it has Dayman, Nightman in it and stuff like that. But uh, I don't really know because, you, you know, I'm not like good friends with them. I don't sit there and talk to them all the time. So, yeah, I don't know what his thought process was. And uh, bummer for me, but such is life. The, hey. the legacy will, will always live on. Yeah. And I think that there could still be like a, a redemption arc almost like you I, know, actually, I, I, I told yeah. them. And, you know, I, I'm like I said, I'm not in contact with them. So I still have like emails, but who knows? They probably changed their emails since then. And I've wrote them on like a. Uh, Instagram and shit. They probably think that I'm like some weird stalker now. They're like, oh great, that fucking Kyle kid is fucking writing me again. Because I, I was like, dude, that. you know, it'd be really funny is to do like a sweet like redemption episode if you, you know, if, if you don't really like it and you want to like re- redeem yourselves. It'd be really cool if you like dive back into like Lil Kev's uh, career or what he's been doing. But uh, just heard crickets, nothing back. Well, you never know. I mean, they keep getting more seasons, and so they're going to need to keep writing new uh, episodes. So, hey, hey, if Little Kev blows up on TikTok, fuck. Yeah, enough. exactly. It's our so, eleven eleven make a wish two 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 two. There it is. Yes. So somebody just in the chat dropped uh, mentioning your shirt. Is this a Camp Crystal Lake shirt I'm seeing here? Oh, and this no joke. I have I have haven't done laundry for a couple of weeks and this thing smells nice. like, yeah, smells like dust because it's so dirty and dusty. Excellent. But uh, yeah, it's a Camp Crystal Lake. It's it's there's not many of these out there. I've actually had offers when I've been on line doing it because I have a lot of horror fans. And it's a it's a uh it's like a crew shirt. So 2008 and Austin when we shot it, and then it has uh 13 on the back. Oh yeah. So, of course it does. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so, so yeah, when I did uh, Friday the Thirteenth, they uh, they gave Johnny, me <laughs> pretty cool, excellent. What was yeah, it like being? I what was it like doing that? And you were also walking, like I go on like a lot of late night walks by myself just for a little exercise and get out of the house. And I was walking on Ventura one night, and some club had just gotten out, and like these like four gangbangers were like like doing like a selfie or going live. This is like a few years ago, right before the pandemic. And I'm just walking on the street wearing, I just happened to be wearing the shirt. And I walk by these guys. And then next thing you know, they're like, they're like what's up, motherfucker? And I was like, oh, shit, what did I do? And they're like, they're, they happen to be uh, something 13 gang. And like, I'll fucking cut that 13 off your back. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's a pretty big gang in, in no, that area. Yeah, but I, I was MS-13. And so, so I was like, Part of me wanted to like go back and be like, be like no, I'm not a, I'm not in a gang. Dude. I, I just did this, sh- this movie, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking walk as fast as I can because they're not going to fucking give two shits about like a horror movie that they've probably never seen. So yeah. That's when to- Jason needs to walk around the corner. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That'd be awesome to have him on speed dial. Like, Hey, yeah. Funk. 
Yeah. Real quick, Crazy. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> what, what you were, were also in more horror stories. You were in American Horror Story Murder House. <laughs> I was, man. That was. I've been lucky to have like quite a few like I- iconic parts, and you know the the thing about that was I did the first season, so I remember when we were doing it, nobody had any idea what it was, because I had just done that. I had just done like a guest star on uh, NCIS LA. Speaking of the Eric Christian Olsen earlier. Yeah, and uh, we shot on the Paramount lot, and then we were also shooting American Horror Story on Paramount lot. And I saw the girl who was uh, who was the main star, and she's like, "Dude, what are you doing here?" I was like, "Oh, I'm shooting this new show called American Horror Story." She's like, "What's that?" And she's like, "And we were joking around. I was like, ah, it'll probably be canceled or something." <laughs> Little did I know it'd be like a fucking huge show. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and you know what sucks is when I when I did that show, they cut out so many. I had like monologue in there of this cool oh, wow. thing. They cut it all out. I wish I could have gotten like a hold of that, but uh, no dice. That no. was fun. I mean, t- to me, Murder House has always been my favorite season, and not just because it was the first one, but there was just a feeling about Murder House, and I liked, you know, the idea of the ghost and the paranormal stuff. Now, do you believe in that? Like, are you? A believer of ghost paranormal. I'm, you know, it's like part of me doesn't believe in it because I'm like, eh, there's nothing. But I, I honestly get scared at nighttime sometimes when I, I hear something or creaking noise. I like think that there's like a ghost. Oh, see, <laughs> just like that, <laughs> trying to scare me right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I get a little scary. That's just his clapper. You know, my yeah. my uh, my brother when I was a little kid, Poltergeist was one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. Ooh, for sure. And my yeah. my mom, she collected antique things, and she had this old antique clown with little bells on it. And late at night, my brother would come into the room and shake the bells on the clown. <laughs> and I would be like, "What the, the fuck?" And I would literally be so scared. And I would go to like check under the bed and stuff like that. And you know, when he checked under the bed, I think fucking pulled him under the bed. So I was always scared <laughs> about that type of stuff. And also uh, the clown from uh, it in the. Oh dr- yeah. That. So I, I don't know. Like I'm sure there's some type of like entities out there, but uh, I personally have never never really seen one. So I, I don't really know. But I, I was a part of this movie called Skinwalker Ranch, too. I don't know if you actually know the oh, story okay. of Skinwalker. But my best friend, he uh, he directed it and produced it and starred in it. So I was also one of the main characters in it. And it's a crazy thing if you know anything about Skinwalker Ranch and, like, shape, uh, shape-shifting and things like that. Yeah, that's... <gasps> and creepy. we shot that movie not too far from the actual Skinwalker Ranch. So it was oh, pretty God. crazy. It's legit. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know, Child's Play fan wants to know if you have anything from the Friday the 13th set other than the shirt. <clears throat> um, you know what? I don't. I actually tried to get the head, which it's it's a somebody has bought in the head. So a fan of mine sent me a picture like, dude, do you know that the the creator of your head or whatever, like sold it to somebody and they have it? And I was like, oh, really? I was like, I was like, can you reach out for him? Reach out to him for me? And he did, but he never got back. I was like, yeah, we could probably make some money if they wanted to like want me to sign it or do something like that. Or I was like, maybe I could buy it because that would be pretty cool to have like just sitting there. But uh, no, I, I didn't I didn't have anything because what a lot of people didn't know was we end up shooting it twice. The first time we shot it, he literally cuts my head off. And that's what, how he gets the mask. It's, he literally pulls it off my head. Uh-huh. But I guess they showed it to an audience, and the and the audience was like, "What? That's fucking cheese ball or something like that." I don't know. So then, like months and months later, like, "Hey, dude, can you come back and reshoot it?" Which I agree that the new ending was way better. And then we got to like do all kinds of stuff where I'm like doing weird shit to the mannequin and doing yeah, all- yeah, you were. Stuff. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I really was. I was, uh, I was doing weird shit to Gina the mannequin, and that shit, that was just all improv because the the producers that stuff. Uh, I had I got like an in with them because another horror thing. I did the remake of Hitcher as well mm-hmm. with uh, mm. Sean Bean and Zachary Knighton and Sophia Bush, and that was literally I had one line in that originally when I auditioned for it. I literally was just like, "Here's the key to the bathroom," and the the producers <clears throat> they were like. They knew that I was like funny from other stuff I'd done. They're like, 
or at last take of the night, which everybody was over it because it was like a night shoot. And it was like five in the morning. Everybody's like, great, this fucking kid, they're going let to let him improv. But I had one take and I did it. And the take lasted for like seven minutes. And they kept almost everything in there. That's great. And, <laughs> and, then and rare. Later on at the 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 uh, the premiere, I was like there, and Michael Bay like uh, at the party, he was like Kyle, and I was like, me, yeah. Mike. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, he knows who I am. And he like called me over, and we like partied all night. He's like, he's like, yeah, I fucking saw your part. I told him to keep everything in there. You were the fucking funniest part of the whole movie. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. So I ended up getting in good with him, and uh, so then they cast me in Friday the Thirteenth, and I did a couple commercials with Michael. But then uh, I'll tell a real quick story because I kind of like burn burn some bridges, which is why I've never never done this before. <clears throat> so Michael Bay has a Christmas party every year, like a really big one with huge people, Steven Spielberg, everybody you can imagine. <clears throat> so I got invited to it, and I brought my best friend, and and I jokingly said beforehand, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna fucking burn every bridge in in town tonight. Literally joking. <clears throat> I ended up getting blackout drunk. Don't even remember. My friend told me all this stuff afterwards. And uh, I guess this was when uh, one of the main producers was married to Jordana Brewster. Uh, and I, I get very happy. And I guess I was like hugging and doing stuff like that. I literally didn't even really do anything wrong, but he got really angry at it. And three days later, I was doing some ADR work for Friday the 13th. And he was like, what the fuck, dude? He's like, that was so unprofessional, man. I was like, what did I do? Oh, no. He was like, yeah, you're just acting stupid. He was like, he's like, that was just really not cool, man. I was like, and the other guy, the other uh, main producer, he thought it was hilarious. He's like, I thought you were a fucking <laughs> man. But I think I made made the guy mad. And honestly, like, because they were going to put me in some other movies and then literally just nothing ever happened anymore. Just, well, it's their loss. Yeah. So, oh, well. Yeah. Fuck well, him. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, probably just lost out on like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not a big deal. <laughs> It happens. I mean, you know. Uh, so before we go into the game, I, I don't want to put both of y'all on the spot, but I feel like I have to because somebody said that they wanted to see a scene between Lil Kev and the guy from Scream. So Josh, how's your your Scream voice? Is it okay? Hello, Sydney. <laughs> hey, that's good. Want to meet bad. up for a new stab? I mean, um. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, are, are you are, are you willing, Kyle? Are you willing sure. to little Kev for? Okay, sure. okay, okay. Just. Who's calling? Who is Kev calling? I'm. Cl I feel like I feel like the scream voice guy has to call. Okay, little Kev. Okay. I'm calling. Okay. <laughs> I'm calling because he's looking for D because he used to hook up with her and he's okay. mad. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Hey, who's cracking, dog? It's little Kev. Cut the small talk, little Kev. You know why I'm here. Where's D? What do you mean small? Are you talking about my small hand? No, your small dick, dummy. Where's D? Oh, snap. That's not nice. Well, D, she's not here right now, but uh, I can take a message for her if you want, and then you can talk to her. Why don't you tell her this, little Kev? Tell her that I got three knives. Two of them are sharpened for her, and then I'm going to leave one of them for you. Oh, I like knives, dog. Those are cool. I like this, like, butter knives and stuff, because sometimes I might cut myself if they're a little too sharp. You know what I'm saying, baby boy? I can't believe I ever wasted my time listening to your raps. Ugh. Tell D I'm on the way. Bye. Oh. I will. All right, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. Lordy shoot. That was good. That was Look, great, brother. They're that making another Scream film. And if they see that, that scene that just happened, let's not be surprised. Well, they might. You know what they, they'll do? They'll do like, uh, remember when they made those funny Scream movies and there was Officer Doofy? Yes. That's, that's the part that I'll probably get. So. <laughs> I love him. Hey, Dave Sheridan, he's amazing. We oh, love he's, some goofy. he's awesome. I love that guy. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, <laughs> uh, so you're amazing. That was amazing. That was amazing. And that was off the cuff. I was not expecting to do. Uh, I don't no. do a scream I, voice. Like it was. Like, it was good. 
It was okay. you were fantastic, John. Look at fuck my hair up the whole thing. Look, I'm all like ravaged. <laughs> yeah. like, I turn the I turn the lights on and I'm like ravaged. Like the ghost came and had his way with me in the, in the night. Well, I, I was gonna say, Josh, if, if you're okay with it, do you want to introduce the Would You Rather game? How about as Optimus Prime? All right. Okay. <laughs> you know it's also funny too real quick the point is that I kept like putting a fake phone up when I would do it <laughs> it's fucking method man yeah it is this. it just happens man in a land before time before the dinosaurs before it was sunny in Philadelphia there was one little calf and today we ask as we play would you rather Autobots roll out. This game's pretty simple. There's no wrong answer. We're just going to ask you a question. First question is, would you rather have a rap battle against Machine Gun Kelly, MGK, I swear to God, I never fall in love, or have a rap battle against Eminem, Mom Spaghetti? Definitely MGK. I don't know if you've seen my YouTube, but I made a sweet diss rap uh, video for MGK because I'm definitely team Eminem. Okay. All day. All right, we're with you. All right, (laughs) here's the next one. Would you rather (laughs) fight against an army of Terminators or fight against an army of Tony Danza clones? Oh, gosh. What a terrible picture of Tony. God, I'm sorry. I do these light minute or, and poor uh, Jude's like, I gotta find a picture of Tony, Tony Danza. 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 Like a, a hug and stuff and like an Italian <laughs> kiss on each side of the cheek. So probably Tony Danza. Those Terminator <laughs> things would fucking destroy me. Hmm. I mean, on the outside, it's Tony Danza, but on the inside, I, I don't know. So if they're cool. clones? Hey, but maybe. <laughs> On the inside, he's just filled with spaghetti and garlic bread. He just wants to vacuum the floor. That's all he (laughs) He just wants to vacuum the floor. Okay, uh, Kyle, would you rather attempt to survive a weekend at Camp Crystal Lake or attempt to survive a dream with Reddy? Oh, shit. Because this is what happened to you in one of them. Yeah, I can definitely uh, go with Camp Crystal Lake because I do. I've had some crazy night, night terrors and, uh, and when I was a kid, I was scared to death of Freddy Krueger. We we drove by this one thing, and I remember he was like going like this on the windows of our car driving by to go trick or treating. So, definitely Camp Crystal Lake. Well, I will say Freddy or Robert England is a very lovely man. Uh, I enjoy him very much. Uh, we saw him recently at a convention where he was just sitting in the corner eating chili. So <laughs> delicious. <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah. All right. Hey, Josh, will you read the next one too? Because you wrote this one and I'm confused. Absolutely. <laughs> Would you rather have to look like Gene Hackman or have to look like Cole Meany, Chief O'Brien from Dark D Space Nine? Gosh. Oh, Lord. You know, I'm already like, uh, you know, I'm like a character actor as is. So let me go with Gene Hackman because that's feel what I'm like saying. Look, the hack space. I feel there's like I already look it. a little bit like the the calm meanie guy. So there's something about the Hackman that is just, you know, I feel like yeah. both you're playing the same role, but with Hackman. You're you know, it's fun. I never knew the other guy's name before. I've seen him. Obviously, I never knew that was his name. I had Colm. to Google the second part. I knew his first name was Colm, and I was like, I, I put McDowell because I knew he was he's an Irish Scottish actor. Uh, yeah. He's been in quite a bit of stuff. He... Phenomenal. It's a name for sure. Colm. Colm. Colm Meany. It's a name. Colm Meany. All right, Colm here's Meany. the next question. All right, terrible accent. Oh, shit. Okay, would you rather, <laughs> Kyle? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, be an electric dream machine, so outfits included, or be in the pecan sandies. Oh, I'm definitely going with Electric Dream Machine. That's that's fucking my style right there for sure. He loved for right. sure, and they have, I mean, day man. It's a classic. Pecan Sandies, me. Eh. But not the so kids much. are popping pe- with it. No one's calling it. I call it the pecan. It's not the pecan Sandies. It's the oh, pecan. Yeah, you can call it pecan Sandies, pecan Sandy. I think pecan <laughs> pecan Sandies like sounds like a better name. I think that's what they yeah, in the episode they went with pecan. They went they went pecan. with that. I'm I'm still gonna go with pecan. I'm team pecan. Fine. All right. Pecan, <laughs> pecan. Sure. All right. Next one. <laughs> Pacoima. Would you rather <laughs> skydive with a guitar or <laughs> skydive with a chainsaw? You can tell <laughs> <laughs> Dude, these are fucking awesome, by the way. 
Oh man, uh, I fucking love chainsaws, so I'm gonna go with a chainsaw. <laughs> Fantastic. Wouldn't that be fun? Like, this guy just just going like that. Oh, that would make like, such no an amazing sense. video. I feel like the the guitar thing has been done before. I'm sure somebody's actually skydived with a chainsaw, right? Uh, I think that is like, like that's a real picture of someone holding a guitar there. I think, and it is a uh, it is a real picture of someone holding a chainsaw too. But I, I think it's yeah. real. On the left. <laughs> I mean, to me, look, I know we I know we keep re you know adding more to the Texas Chainsaw franchise. I'm thinking this is the next one. He's in Leatherface in, in the sky with his chainsaw. Right? Could you imagine that the whole movie they just <laughs> they just keep redoing like uh, skydives? They never touch the ground. The whole movie is just a fighting in the fucking sky. That would be sick. Other. Like a, and then, a like, group of sky people the, who are that'd be amazing. Yeah, they cut the people down on the street with like limbs <laughs> falling on and stuff like that. <laughs> that would be amazing. I am oh. so into it. We should I'm... fucking do that. We need to like make sure we get that out there and uh what is that? Uh, make sure nobody steals our idea because that's yeah. fantastic. There's a terror in the sky. <laughs> One class starting to begin their skydiving lessons, but a man emerges from the clouds. <laughs> this, this October, the limbs and heads fall from the sky. <laughs> Leatherface is back. Skydive. Chain Skyblade. Skysaw. <laughs> I think that's gonna happen, man. They did Jason in space, so why not this? Yeah, I'm it, with it. Perfect. Well, I am with it. There's only one way to end this. Would you rather? It's one of our favorite questions. Oh no! Oh, we have two more. We have two more. Oh. Okay, never mind. This never mind. Okay, would you rather compete with Dennis on Project One Way or compete with Charlie on The Amazing Race? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. I'm going to go with Charlie on The Amazing Race. I think we could do some fun stuff together. Real I fun agree. stuff. And, you know, Charlie, he likes to get real weird with stuff, and so do I. So Wild card. He, exactly. He is a fucking wild card. I yeah. bet on you guys. I'll, I'll have him uh, <laughs> come and bring toes, uh, or, uh, Frank's toe knife with him. Oh, love a toe knife. Yes. Big Who, doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> All right, Josh, now you get to ask the question. I get to ask it. Finish yeah. him off. Yeah. Here we go. Kyle Davis, would you rather be a reverse merman or a reverse centaur? <laughs> Strong's getting oh. more erotic on the reverse. Oh, my God. <laughs> these it's are a just foot. Fucking so great. Where are you getting these things? Our brains. <laughs> They're fucked up. <laughs> Gosh, I don't even know if I could decide. I'd like to be both of those. Oh, that's a first. <laughs> those you are have just... more mobility as a centaur. But, you do, but you have so much more to explore in the water. Is it? That's true. You know, that's a sexy fish. That's in a, water. That is. So, man, I'm gonna go with the the Murph, the reverse reverse merman. Oh, I think hey. that would be fun. Oh. I, I'd like to explore the water all over the place. Sure. Uh, and, and it's funny you mentioned where we get them from. So normally, like a few days before, my <laughs> husband and I, like we start writing ones. And then Josh, in the middle of the night, will wake up. <laughs> and and the next day, Jude and I will like look at the thing. We're like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, Josh. In the middle of the this... night, I woke up from a dream. <laughs> <Right. I> woke... <laughs> <laughs> you have a beautiful brain, Josh. Beautiful brain. I love brain. those. Well, so you survived, and yeah. uh, unfortunately, we've come to the end of a very fun, 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 to say the least, live stream. This so before we wrap incredible, it up, incredible episode. any final so thoughts, time. Kyle? Oh, I just went by so fast. I know. we got to do part two, talk about some other stuff. Yes, Kyle, absolutely. tell us where we can find you on social media. What are you plugging right now? Where can we find you right now? Um, you can on? find me, like I said, I just started the TikTok, so I want to promote that a lot. So you can find me on there. Uh, I think it's The Real Lil Kev. Or Kyle, just type in Kyle Davis. Then you can find me on Instagram at Shade Donkey. And you can find me on uh, Facebook, Lil Kevin Ramus. And, uh, and then you can just find me, Kyle Davis, all, on all the other things. Real quick, can you explain Shade Donkey? Sure. Uh, Shade was the name of my cat, and I loved her so much. And Donkey is my favorite animal, so I went Shade Donkey. Nice. Love I was I was just watching... Uh, I guess it was Jackass 3 last night when they were doing Pin the Tail on the Donkey. That oh. donkey was not very <laughs> nice. No, no, yeah. it's. Uh, I love Jackass movies too. Have you seen the newest one yet? No, but I, I, I want to. I saw you guys had Rab. You guys had Rab himself? Yes, we sure did, yeah. 
Love that guy. Yeah. I got and to I talk was, to him about Kitty yeah, and all the old CKY cool. shit. I got to we get to, yeah. we get to ask like these really weird questions. <laughs> oh yeah, God, he's, and, I love that guy. He's so good. What now? Was it true? Was he like Matt Damon's real cousin, or is that just a joke? <laughs> I have. That's the first. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was like a thing I heard about. I feel like because on like CKY, <laughs> the thing that he did with Bam, like they were talking about something like that. It's probably now we have to. It's false, I guess. I need to know. I need to. I actually. We're I gonna got have to, to do... follow up on that because that is <laughs> yeah. a great. You know what's funny when you mentioned that? Like I had a, a nostalgia memory. Like I've heard that. I've heard that somewhere. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Huh. Well, I think, anyway, I think yeah. it might have been in the CKY videos he did, which I love those things. You got CKY videos are so good. Yeah. Did, so, no, no, we're going back. I th did they do something when he was trying to get in somewhere and he said he was Matt Damon's cousin? Is that maybe? At least we're, we're, we'll, we'll find out and we'll let you know. Well, hey, you're the king of looking shit up, Josh. So just Google that we'll shit. We'll find you. When we'll you're half you, awake and then, and then send me an email or something. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> half awake. Yes, we love it. <laughs> exactly. Um, so before we do wrap it up, we're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have coming up on the stream. So <laughs> I can feel it. Okay. Anyway, so uh, Thursday, we have Nali, who is Judo Master from Peacemaker. On Friday, we have Paul Zaloom from Beekman's World. Next week, we have Nicholas from All American Rejects. Tuesday, we have Burt Ward from Batman. We also have um, Josh V. We have Tim Russ, D. Wallace, David Cook coming up. And of course, Course, part two with Kyle Davis. We have to get that in the books. <laughs> yes. Because we barely scratched the surface. So. You guys got some awesome guests coming up. I look forward to that. <laughs> well, thank you. And you've been so awesome. And thank you so much again. This has just been like my face hurts from awesome. smiling so much. So incredible. Kyle, can't thank you enough. Uh, appreciate you. <laughs> Best of luck. Keep, keep, keep your eyes peeled, like you mentioned, on all the services. And if you want to look up the old stuff on American uh, Horror Story and Friday the 13th, go for it. I highly recommend Check it. Check it out. I appreciate it. It's fun talking to you guys, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, well, until we meet again on Thursday, guys, have a wonderful rest of your two, 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 and make sure to look at the clock at 11, 11 p.m., and we'll see you guys real soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.